Just give me one second. Hey everyone, welcome to Skein Spider. Today we are making an Animal Crossing gift box. So grab your hooks and let's get started. To make this pattern, you're going to need two hook sizes. You're going to need the recommended hook size for your yarn, as well as another hook size that is one size smaller than that. And make sure these hook sizes just match your yarn. So you can use any weight of yarn to create this pattern. You're also going to need scissors, stitch markers, a needle, pins, stuffing, and the optional materials of some cardboard and a glue gun. The gift box is constructed of two parts. We've got the box part and the lid part. Now these both follow the same pattern in terms of increases, the difference being the height. So the box is going to have more rounds because it's taller and the lid is going to have fewer because it's shorter. The other difference between them is that the box part is going to be crocheted in a smaller hook size. So for the lid, you're going to use the recommended hook size for your yarn. So whatever yarn weight you're using, whatever the recommended hook size is for that, you're going to use that to crochet the lid. And for the box, you're going to use either half or one size down. So for example, I'm going to be using a 4.5 millimeter hook for my lid, and I'm going to be using a four millimeter hook to create the box. To start off, we're going to put four single crochet in a magic circle. Now before we start round two, I just want to make you aware that in this pattern, we're not going to be using sort of the traditional increases. We're going to be using a three single crochet increase. So in the written pattern, I've abbreviated this to 3SC, so three single crochet followed by ISS. This means in the same stitch. So three single crochet in the same stitch. I'm going to be using this in place of increases. So going forward, if I accidentally say increase, just know that for the box and the lid, I mean three single crochet increases or three single crochet in the same stitch to increase, not the, not the traditional two single crochet in the same stitch to increase. So I will try and say the correct thing, but if I bugger it up, I do mean three single crochet in the same stitch is an increase. Round two is going to be three single crochet in the same stitch for each stitch. So the first stitch from round one, we're going to put three in there. One, two and three. We're going to do the same to the second stitch. One, two and three. And the same thing for both stitches three and four. And three. So at the end of round two, we should now have 12 stitches in our round. From this point onwards, what we're going to be doing is stacking our three single crochet increases in the corners so we get a square shape. Round three is going to be two single crochet, then a three single crochet increase repeated four times. So we're going to go one, and then I'm going to place my stitch marker here. And two three single crochet increase two and three and then just repeat that pattern three more times or four in total for round four we're going to start off with three single crochet And three and then we're going to do a three single crochet increase and then we're going to repeat four single crochet one three single crochet increase three times And 
And then after that third increase or th three single crochet increase, we're going to have one stitch left over and we're just going to single crochet into that. Round five is four single crochet and then a three single crochet increase. We're going to follow this with six single crochet and a three single crochet increase repeated three times and then finish off the round with two single crochet. Round six is a five single crochet and a three single crochet increase. And then we're going to repeat eight single crochet, a three single crochet increase three times and finish off the round with three single crochet. Round seven starts with six single crochet and then we're going to do a three single crochet increase, then repeat 10 single crochet, a three single crochet increase three times and finish off our round with four single crochet. At the end of round seven, we should have 52 stitches in our round and for round eight we're going to be working into the back loops only. The back loop is the part of the stitch that's furthest away from us. So if you look at your stitches you can see that they look like little V's. The part of the V that's on this side, so furthest away from you, is the back loop. And that's where we're going to be working for round eight and we're just going to be doing 52 single crochet in the back loop only. When you're done with round eight, this is the point at which the box and the lid differ. If you're crocheting the box part, rounds nine through to 20 are going to be 52 single crochet each. But if you're crocheting the lid, then rounds nine through to 11 are going to be 52 single crochet each. And also keep in mind that if you are doing the lid, you need to jump up a hook size or half a hook size, depending on what the recommended hook size of your yarn is. And for the box, which is what I'm doing now, I'm using a smaller hook size. So just keep that in mind. When you've finished round 20, we're just going to slip stitch to finish off. And then you'll want to cut a tail. This tail doesn't need to be long enough to sew because we won't be sewing with it. We just need it long enough that we can weave it into the backs of the stitches to hide it later on. Next, we're going to be making the ribbon that goes on the side of both the box and the lid. Now, they follow the same pattern, mostly. Just the ones for the box are going to be a bit longer because they have more rounds, obviously. For both of these, we're going to be using the smaller hook size. So whatever hook size you use to crochet the box, that's what we're going to be using to create these. And for that, you're going to have to grab your red yarn and then begin, whoops, and then begin with a slip knot and then chain four. We're going to start in the second chain from the hook and we're just going to do three single crochet across for round one, row one. For the rest of this pattern and the pattern for the lid as well, we're not doing any increases or decreases or anything. So the entire pattern is really just three single crochet across, but at just the corners or where the corners will be in both the box and the lid, we're going to be working in either the front loop or the back loop to create the bend. So from rows two to 12, we're just going to chain one, turn our work and then do three single crochet across. So that was two. Row 13 also begins with a chain one and turning our work. However, this time we're working in the front loops only. So that is the part of the stitch, the part of the V that's closest to us. 
So we're just going to do three single crochet in the front loop only. Rounds 14 through to 27 are going to be chain one, turn your work, and then three single crochet across. For round 28, we're going to chain one and turn our work, but this time we're going to be working into the back loops only, so the part of the stitch that's furthest away from us. And again, we're just going to do three single crochet. And then we're going to chain one and turn our work, and rounds 29 through to 40 are just going to be three single crochet. When you finish row 40, you're going to need to cut a tail. Now the length of this tail is going to depend on how you want to attach the side pieces. If you want to sew them on, you're going to need to cut a really long tail. But if you're going to glue them on, which is what I'm going to do, you're going to cut a short tail that you can just weave in. I don't usually like gluing on pieces to my amigurumi, but because the box is worked in a continuous spiral, that means the rounds don't quite line up. So when you're sewing, while in my testing, I couldn't really get the lines nice and straight like I wanted to, so that's why I've chosen to glue these on. But if you want to sew them on, you're just going to have to cut a much longer tail. The top part of the ribbon is going to follow the same pattern relatively as the bottom of the ribbon or the, the ribbon for the box. So we're going to begin by chaining four, three and four. And then row two is going to be three single crochet and we're starting that from the second chain on the hook. Two and three. Now the only difference between the box ribbon and the lid ribbon is that the lid ribbon has smaller sides because obviously that's not as tall as the box. So for rounds two to five, we're going to chain one, turn our work and do three single crochet. For row six, we're going to chain one, turn our work and work in the front loop only this time. So in the front loops only, put three single crochet across. And then row seven through to 19 are going to be chain one, turn work and three single crochet. Row 20, chain and turn, and this time we're working in the back loops only, so you're going to put three single crochet there. And then rows 21 through to 25 are chain one, turn work, and three single crochet. And then when you're finished, we're going to do the same thing we did with the other ribbon piece. You're either going to cut a long tail if you want to sew it on, or just cut a short tail for weaving in if you want to glue it down. Next, we're going to be making the long ribbon piece for the bow on the top. And again, we're using our smaller hook size, so whatever that was for you. And we're going to begin with a slip knot. But this time, we're only going to chain three because this is going to be a little bit narrower than these two pieces. So chain three, then row one, start in the second chain from the hook, and we're just going to do two single crochet. And two. And from this point, we're not going to do any increasing or decreasing. We're just going to continue on in one long row. So rows one through to 60 are just going to be chain one, turn your work, and two single crochet. All right, once you've done row 60, what we're then going to do is single crochet around the entire piece, putting two Pico stitches in at each end. So we're going to begin by simply single crocheting into the end of each row all the way down the side here until we reach the end.
When you've reached the end, we're going to work across the two stitches here and we're going to do a picot stitch in each. So to begin, you're going to go into the first one and do a single crochet. And also as a side note, I'm just going to be working over this end to hide it. Once you've done that first single crochet in the end here, we're going to chain three and three. Next, we're going to put a single crochet into the back bump of the first chain. If you're not sure what the back bump is, if you look at your stitches from front on and you can see the little V's of the stitch, if you turn those over, this little bump of yarn at the back here, so behind the front and the back loop, that's the back bump. So you're going to find the back bump of the first chain. So again, here's my stitch. I'm just turning it over. There's the back bump. And I'm just going to put a single crochet into that. And then we're going to do a picot stitch in the second stitch here. So you're going to go straight into that single crochet. And we're going to repeat what we just did. Chain three. Single crochet into the back bump of the first chain. And then after this, we're just going to rotate our work and we're going to single crochet back down this side like we did across the top here. And then when we get to the end, we're going to do another two picot stitch in the two end stitches here. So we've reached the end and now I'm just going to do the two picot stitches in these last or these ends stitches. So single crochet, chain three, single crochet into the back bump, single crochet into the next stitch and just repeat chain three, back bump. And then to finish off, I'm just going to slip stitch into the first stitch that we did if my yarn will stay on my hook. There we go. And for this, we don't need to leave a tail for sewing. We are instead going to cut a short tail that we can weave in later on. The last piece that we need to crochet is going to be the balloon. Now for that, I'm using my small hook size again, but it doesn't really matter which hook size you use. So if you'd prefer to use your larger hook size, you can go ahead and do that. And we're going to begin with six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. And unlike the box that we made, we're going back to using only two single crochet in each stitch for an increase. Round three is one single crochet, one increase repeated six times. Round four begins with one single crochet and then we're going to repeat two single crochet, one increase five times and then just finish off the round with one single crochet. Round five is three single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round six is 30 single crochet. Round seven begins with two single crochet. You're going to follow this with an increase and then repeat four single crochet, one increase five times and finish off the round with two single crochet. Round eight is 36 single crochet. Round nine is five single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round 10 is 
At the end of round nine, there should now be 42 stitches in your round, and then rounds 10 through to 14 are just going to be 42 single crochet each. Round 15 is 12 single crochet and a decrease repeated, tw no, three times, repeated three times. We're going to begin with the 12 single crochet. And 12. And after that 12 single crochet, we're going to do our decrease. To do that, you're going to go under the front loops of the next two stitches, so under the first and then under the second yarn over and pull through both of those front loops. This will leave you with two loops on your hook. You're just going to yarn over and pull through to finish the decrease. So after this, we need to repeat 12 single crochet, one decrease twice more for three times in total. Rounds 16 and 17 are both 39 single crochet. Round 18 is 11 single crochet and one decrease repeated three times. Round 19 is 10 single crochet and a decrease repeated three times. Round 20 is a nine single crochet and a decrease repeated three times. Round 21 is eight single crochet and a decrease repeated three times. Round 22 is seven single crochet and a decrease done three times. Round 23 is six single crochet and a decrease repeated three times. Round 24 is five single crochet and a decrease repeated three times. Round 25 is one single crochet and a decrease repeated six times. And then after we've finished this round, we're just going to stop and then begin stuffing the balloon. When you finish stuffing, we're going to continue with round 26, which is six decreases. Round 27 is going to be worked in the back loop only, and we're just going to do six single crochet. All right, what we're going to do now is just finish off this portion of the balloon, but we've got a little bit more to do. So before we do that, we're just going to cut a short tail, pull up with your hook, and then you're going to grab your needle. Thread the tail end through your needle, and then we're just going to close up this hole. To do that, go under the front loops of the last six stitches we did, so those single crochet, six single crochet we did. And six. Pull on the yarn so the hole closes up, and then you're going to insert your needle straight back into the center of round 27, and then just weave it through the body. All right, get rid of any excess yarn. And then we're going to grab our hook again and insert it into the first front loop, so where we put our stitch marker. 
from round 27. Bring in the yarn that you were just using and we're going to line it up behind that front loop, yarn over and pull through and then we're just going to slip stitch to join. Now this slip stitch isn't going to be counting as a stitch in the round so we're going to begin by starting with one single crochet into that stitch we just slip stitched into. And then round 28, which is going to be worked in the front loops from round 27, is just going to be two single crochet and an increase repeated twice. Round 29 is three single crochet and an increase repeated twice. Finish off with a slip stitch and then we're just going to weave in both of these ends like we did at the end of round 27. Now we're going to begin assembling. What you can do, like I've done here with the box, if you want to get it to keep its shape, is to just use some cardboard and create a square that you can insert into the box. And that will help as you add the stuffing to keep it nice and square. After you've done that, if you're going to do that at all, you're going to attach the longer ribbons. So the ones that had a, a longer side, you're going to place one across one side and then one across the other, like so. And I have used my glue gun to do this because as I mentioned before, it was difficult to sew a straight line and it looked pretty ugly. I didn't like it. So I've decided to glue those on, but if you want to sew yours on, you can go ahead and do that now. And I haven't done a too detailed assembly on this because I'm going to save that for the top of the box, which is pretty much the same. So at this point, after your sides are on and your cardboard is in, if you want that, you can either choose to have this lid sewn down so that's why i've left the tail but if you'd like your box to open you can either sew on one side or not sew it on at all it's entirely up to you but i'm going to sew it down completely and i'm not going to stuff it first what i'm going to do is i'm going to sew on probably three quarters of the way add the stuffing then and then i'm going to sew it down so i'm going to grab my needle and then i am going to sew the lid two between the last two rows so you can see our last or rounds our last round here our second last round here i'm going to sew it in between here and then when you're finished sewing we're just going to weave this end in Next, we're going to put the ribbons on the top of the box. Now, when we created these ribbons, as well as these ones here, at one point we worked in the front loops only, and at one point we worked in the back loops only. That's going to create a small bend in our ribbon. You can see it here, how it bends. These two bends at either end are going to line up with the edge of the box, or the lid in this case. So if you're sewing your ribbons on, go ahead and pin those down and begin sewing them on, and I'm going to be gluing mine on. The other thing you need to remember is we need to line up our top ribbons with our bottom ribbons. So if you're doing the bottom first, it doesn't really matter too much where you place them, just get them as centered as you can. But when you go and place the top ribbons on, you're going to want to make sure that the ends line up. So that's what I'm doing. And now I'm just going to add some glue. And I'm just putting a little bit of glue on for now. I'll go back in later and add a little bit more to fix it, but I don't want to waste too much time on it in this video. And then when you've done the first, we're going to add the second. And 
When the box is all done, we're going to grab our other ribbon that we made, the one with the two picot stitches at each end. And you also want to grab your red yarn. First thing I'm going to do is weave in this end. And then what we're going to do is shape this or fold it into a bow. So I'm just going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to push the top in and just twist the bottom until we get what is roughly a bow shape. So you have the two picot stitches at the end and then two loops here. At this point, oh, if I can get that to stay there. Okay, let's do that again. <laughs> at this point, I'm going to bring in my red yarn if I can find the end and then to keep everything together I'm just going to place the yarn in the middle okay I'm, I'm doing this again it's slipped too much <laughs> there we go and then I'm just going to bring in the red yarn Place it in the center where all the all the pieces overlap and I'm just going to begin wrapping it tightly. Now you want to make sure all your pieces are together because if you miss one the the bow is going to come undone. So see how this one I haven't quite caught that yet I'm going to make sure that overlaps and then I'm going to continue wrapping all the pieces together. And you want to do this nice and tight. When you're finished, you're going to cut a tail. And this needs to be long enough that you can sew with it. And then I'm just going to grab my needle and then thread it. And then at the back of the bow, we're just going to weave this through just so it doesn't unravel. And then we're just going to set that aside for a minute because we're not sewing that on just yet. Instead, you're going to grab your balloon because we're going to attach that next and some yarn in whatever color you'd like the string to be. You have two options here. What you can do is just sew the yarn to both the balloon and the box so they're attached that way. But another thing I tried, but for me it didn't work great, so I'm not doing it here, is to get a bit of wire, length of wire, and then wrap that in your yarn color. And you're going to insert one end of the wire into the box and the other end into the balloon. But my balloon ended up a little bit too heavy, so the wire just kept bending. It didn't look fantastic, so I'm going with this method. So all I'm going to do is thread my needle through my grey yarn, which I'm using. And you're going to cut this however long you'd like the balloon to be, or the balloon string. So I don't want it too long. What I'm going to do now is go into the box. And I'm going to start outside of the where the ribbons cross, so you can see here. And I'm going to push my needle up through the center, so where I've emerged here. Then what I'm going to do is just going to go one stitch over and then back out of the center stitch that I came out from. And tie that off. And I'm going to do that with another stitch. Now, if this is messy or you're worried about seeing that yarn, don't worry too much because we are going to be placing the bow on the top, which will hide any stitches. So make sure it's nice and secure. So I'm going to do probably about three or four knots. I think that will do. And then I'm just going to go back into the ribbon and then out of my original stitch that I went into or from the center. So when that's done, you're going to take your ribbon and then whoops, pass your needle through the back, so in the middle, 
push it through there. You might have to wiggle this to get it through all the yarn. And then you're going to keep pushing it until it emerges out of the top. So we're still roughly in the middle here. Keep pulling until your ribbon sits flush against the box. Now I'm going to take my needle out of here. So we're going to attach the balloon to this end, but I find it easier to sew all these parts down first. So first thing I'm going to do is just take this gray end that we left hanging out and then just weave that back into the box because it won't come out because we've knotted it off here. And then next thing we're going to do is sew down our bow. So you're going to take the end that we left from that and I'm just deciding which side I want to be the front. So I think mm, this one probably looks neatest. So this is going to be the front side for me here. So I'm going to have the bow face that way and then I'm just going to sew that down to the ribbon. Okay, and then when you're done, we're just going to weave this end in too. And then our final step is to re-thread this tail end when it's using as the balloon string. And we're going to just go into the opening at the end of the balloon here. And then all I'm going to do, because this end will hide any knots, is just tie this off. If you want to be a little bit neater about it, you can sew it in, but I'm just going to be skipping that part. <laughs> I'm not too worried about it. And then cut off any excess. And there we have our Animal Crossing gift box. Thanks for watching, hit subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next week with a new pattern.